Hey guys, this is Chris. We have a lot of users in the group that use their white on a printer to print water slide decals. And we are going to make a comparison with two printers, so you can see which is the best. And also with two toner kits in case you have a white toner printer already. In case you are using your white toner printer only for textiles, you might wonder what are water slide decals. Simply put, these are heatless transfers like AquaClear. So what can you do with these heatless transfers? Or you can decorate candles, which would otherwise melt under heat. The most popular use is definitely decals for model cars and model trains. And you can also use it for quite everything else that you don't want to place under your heat press. If you're looking for a white toner printer to print decals, you want to have a printer that has an underprint capability, like the iColor 560 or the iColor 650. Let me show you how to set it to underprint. This is the 560, we open it up. We have cyan, magenta, yellow and white on the front. This is the overprint position for this printer. If we take a look on the inside of the hood, then we can see a sticker, which tells us to put white on the rear end. So we're going to take the white cartridge out. We're going to pull cyan from the back and place it in the front. We put white in the rear end and it's done. Now it's underprint. We're also going to test with overprint, like we have it in the Oki Creo printers. And we're also going to make decal prints with CMYK in case we don't have a white toner printer at all. Let's close the cover and start with some test prints. I've made 9 test prints in total with different settings. We're going to start with CMYK. Then we go over to overprint, like we have with the Oki Creo. D560 with underprint, 3 different white toner settings. Then D560 with glossy toner, also with 2 different white toner coverages. And the 650 also with two different white toner coverages. In case you want to change the white toner coverage by yourself, you can do this in ProRip under Color Adjust and then you're going to move the slider over here. Let's take a look at our different printouts. This here is CMYK. If we zoom in, we can see all the different colors, but white is missing. Then we have Overprint. Overprint has white over your colors, so it prints white, but all the other colors will be blocked by the white toner. As next, we have underprint with the 560, 170% toner coverage. We can see white and also all the colors are nice and clearly printed. Next one, underprint 280 with the 560, higher white coverage. Let's zoom in. And here we can see that white is pushing through the darker colors a little bit. Then we have max white, underprint with 400% white toner coverage. This means white is behind every color. If we zoom in, we can see the white pushing through all of the colors and also the black isn't as sharp as with the other options. So here we have it, three different prints with the 560, underprint 170, 280 and 400. Next one up is the 560 with glossy toner. So we have the GT over here, so we can recognize it. The colors are a little bit brighter, this is 280 coverage. And we can immediately see that the white toner isn't bleeding as much through as with the regular toners. So it looks much better. Let's compare this with maximum white, 400% coverage with the glossy toners. Let's also zoom in. And also here the white is bleeding through in the same amount as with the regular toners. Next one, eye color 650, underprint 250, which is the default option. Let's zoom in and we can't see any bleeding through of white, even with regular toners with the eye color 650 printer. The small text in black looks great as well. We also have an example of the 650 with maximum white, so underprint 400. If we zoom in on the paper, it looks pretty much the same as with the default option. So no bleeding through over here as well. In case you have never seen the application, this is what you need. You need an object to apply on, like our car, some water, a tea towel to for your hands, and either a cutter or a scissor, and of course our transfers. This here is Steam YK. We're going to cut out a flower. We're going to make a simple square cut and throw it in a bowl of water to let it soak for a few seconds. To apply it, we take it out of the water and we're going to carefully slide away the upper layer from the bottom layer. We can use our fingers or we can use a brush for finer details. Then we're gonna let it dry. I just help it here with the tea towel. As long as it's wet, you can move it freely. And we can immediately see that when we are using CYK on a light blue background, the colors immediately look a little bit dull, and that is vibrant as they could be. So CMYK is only recommended for truly white substrates. As soon as you have color substrates, then white toner would look much better. Let's also apply our other examples. We have here the gradient, we have fine black text, 
and we also have the yellow green funky design here we can see all designs applied the gradient the funky text the black text is actually a quite good reference if we compare it later with the composite black without the true black here is it in close up colors are not really ripened black looks good without the white our other designs do look a little bit desaturated too for completion let me show you what it looks like if you use an Oki Creo printer here with overprint the white is printed over the colors if we apply a transfer like this with the white over the colors everything looks very dull and desaturated just a very pale result that's actually not usable let's move on with the iColor 560 as standard toners under print 170% white toner coverage which is a reduced amount from the default perfect for lighter substrates like this light blue car over here colors look vibrant white doesn't bleed through the small text with composite black looks good the gradient compared to the CMYK print looks much better you can see the white toner the red is more vibrant as well the funky text looks more vibrant than the CMYK version overall a quite good result for a lighter colored substrate here are some close ups for you this here is the gradient design and here is the full color design also the fine black text without having real black The next one is iColor 560 standard toners with the default underprint, 280% fill up. Here we can see the white speckles coming through. Let's see how they look on a substrate. So here we have the block colors. The speckles are visible. The black text looks just fine because there is no white under the black text. The red to white gradient looks much lighter. And the funky text actually looks a bit better I would say. If we use 400% white toner, all the colors become underprinted by white and we can see this white leaking through the black text. So that's, this is not recommended. If you have the 560 and are into underprint application, I highly recommend to take a look at the glossy toners. With the glossy toners, we have a toner composition that's specially developed for these underprint applications and it will prevent the white bleeding through the colors in the same intensity as you saw it with the regular toners. Here you can see some close-ups with the same designs. The white bleeding is heavily reduced, the small text still looks great, the colors in general are a little bit brighter, but the look overall is much cleaner. For a larger budget, the iColor 650 printer does not only provide a larger format, but also provides superior underprint capabilities, so white doesn't bleed through at all. Here we can see an example with default option, 250% white, no white bleeding through at all, the small text looks fine as well, here the gradient, the red looks best, the gradient is the finest of all. Generally speaking, the colors look more vibrant in total. Here you can see everything moving with different lighting conditions. On top we have underprint 560, 170%, 280%, glossy toner and on the bottom there is the 650 with default settings. The 650 looks far superior to me. On the other side we can see the spot colors again, we can see the black text. Overall, the best result of all. Now we have seen all prints on light colored subjects. I haven't had a dark car, but I do have this dark boomerang over here. So we're going to apply all these prints from all these printers and settings onto my boomerang over here. We're going to start from left to right with CMYK, then overprint like with the Creo, then 560, underprint 170. Print 280 to 400, then the glossy toner with two different coverages, then the 650 with 250 and 400, and see which one looks best. So here are all transfers applied. Just a quick overview. We're going into details in a moment. So here are the details. CMYK doesn't work at all on dark substrates, there's no white to back it up. The colors are completely lost. The overprint, like we can see in the Creo printers, doesn't work at all because white is covering the colors instead of backing it up. Here, 170% fill up means only the light colors will be backed up with white, not all the dark colors. So here these dark colors have no white behind them because they are stronger than 170%. This here is 560 with default settings, underprint 280%. We can see all colors besides black are getting backed up with white, so they are more vibrant on dark substrates, but white is also bleeding through a little bit. 
Right next to it we can see 560 standard toners with 400% fill up, 400% white coverage. This means we have white behind every color, including black. So here our black is nice and deep and here on the 400 it is a little bit grayish. Let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. So here we have 400% coverage, white behind black, black becomes a little bit grayish. Here is 280, no white behind black and the black looks much better. Here we can see the same with the Glossy Toner, 560 printer, Glossy Toner 280, looks pretty nice, no white bleeding through. Glossy Toner 400, white is bleeding a little bit behind black, so the Glossy Toner with 280 actually looks better than the Glossy Toner with 400. In general you can also say that the Glossy Toner looks a little bit brighter than the Standard Toners. Here we have Standard Toners of the 650. With 250% white coverage, looks nice and vibrant, no white bleeding. And here the 650, 400% white toner coverage, looks almost the same. I would say the black is a little bit better with the 250 version, but in both cases we have no bleeding of white toner behind the colors. In summary, I, we can say that the iColor 650 delivers the best results, especially if you just stick to the default settings of 250, like over here. Second best, the Glossy Toner 280, also default settings. Maxing out the white coverage brings us no benefits, it just makes our dark colors less vibrant. What also doesn't work is CMYK and overprint like we have it in the OK Creo printers. And finally, just some close-ups of the different results. I hope this video was useful for you and you could find your favorite setting or your favorite printer if in case you're looking for a printer. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you and bye bye.